Hello everybody. So in this video I'll show you a bowl shaped magnet array with an electromagnet at its center and also the interesting field dynamics that will evolve when I feed this electromagnet with an AC signal from an audio amplifier. So in my last video I showed you a similar principle with this array which has only electromagnets which are all driven at the same time. I showed you what happens with this array in my last video, but this time around what I'm going to do is I'm using a magnet array with 59 permanent magnets. These are 8 mm cube magnets arranged in a bowl shaped pattern that I've showed you in earlier videos. But yeah, what I've done additionally is I've added one single electromagnet right at the center point here. And this is the kind of electromagnet that I use here. Just a tiny, simple electromagnet coil. Okay, let's just glue it into the center here. And I've just connected the outputs to the audio amplifier that I'm using. It's a 300 watt audio amplifier. And that is fed by a frequency generator that's feeding it a sine wave signal. Okay, so we're driving this with AC current. And first off, I'll just show you the field shape of the, of the array itself with a regular color gradient magnetic viewing film. And if you haven't seen this before, it has the same um, yeah, field shape as always. Even though there is an electromagnet coil in the center, but it's not powered on, so it doesn't affect the field that much. And you can see on the corner of the film here, this blank spot. And this blank spot is the, basically the zero point of the field. Just moving around the field viewer a bit, so you can get a better idea of what the field looks like, especially from the side here. You can see this white line that's slightly curved. It's like shaped like a dome around here. And this is um, basically just separating the two polarities of the field. But we also have this interesting phenomenon of this zero point that's sitting somewhere around here. And if you measure that, you get with the Gauss meter zero magnetic flux here right around this point. And when I turn on that electromagnet, you will see let me do this quickly. Field shape changes actually a lot. You see this white line wobbling up and down. But this is the maximum amount of time I can turn it on without cooling. So I'm feeding it with quite a lot of power at actually the maximum my amplifier can do. And this small coil gets very hot very fast within a few seconds and it would just melt the glue that it's glued in and the plastic housing. So I had to come up with a solution which is a quick and simple solution, ice cubes. And yeah, that's the best solution I could come up fast with because if you want to turn this set up on for longer than five seconds and then let it cool down for 10 minutes you have to use something to cool it and i just put ice cubes on it it works decently and i can turn it on for like i don't know 30 seconds without everything melting down and now i've just turned it on again and if i put the field viewer just on top of here you can see even from up here the color slightly shifting and yeah, ice is still boiling. Um, what I want to show you with this is the field overall outside here and especially inside here is shifting a lot. So let me turn it on again. I just try to get some good shots on the field here. This is at five hertz. You can see the ice boiling, so I'll turn it off again. And what you could see here is like when it's turned off versus when I turn it on, how the field shifts. 
I can also bring down the frequency a bit. You can see this even better. Turn up the frequency. So this is just what's happening inside here. As you can see, I just push the ice on top of it and it's just boiling it away pretty quickly, that ice cube. Let me change it out for a fresh one. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of, a lot of heat is dissipated here. Um, then I'll just place the field viewer on top of it again. I'll try to get a better shot. But I hope you can see that on camera, the field like changing in color here at the frequency of the field oscillating. And what I want to show you with this is that just this one small electromagnet, which normally has like a field that extends a few millimeters outside, which is visible underneath this field viewer, um, actually influences the overall field of the entire magnet array so much that the influence is actually measurable out here. So what this does is actually by flipping the ins uh, inside on the center point here um, in polarity with an oscillating AC field, um, yeah, you expand and collapse the entire field. And I can show you this even better with just the Gauss meter. So bring that into the camera. Hopefully you can see that quite well. Sorry for that. So we reset it. And then here I have my probe. Okay, this little black small dot here is the actual probe. And I'll just place it to the center here. You can see we have around 40 millitesla. And if I turn it on again, you can see the values changing. Of course, this Gauss meter is not for AC currents, it's for DC fields, but still I've turned down the frequency so low like currently, when I turn it on again, it's at four hertz. So the change in the field strength is noted with the Gauss meter. Pull it down here. You can see this especially well. Now I have to refuel my <laughs> setup again. Let me just put another ice cube in here and turn it on again. I'll show you this better this time. So you see on the Gauss meter the field changing up and down constantly. If I get closer to the so-called zero point down here, currently the ice cube is still in the way, but you can see we are close to zero millitesla here at the zero point. So I'll just show you the same as with the Gauss meter. That's what's actually happening in real time with the field. Okay, I have to turn it off again before I burn down everything. Because as you can hear, the water is still boiling underneath here. Gets it insanely hot. So yeah, another thing that I showed you with my last array and also can show you with this one. It's just to have here a stack of four small disc magnets within this plastic housing. What I can do with it is I can just place it here to the center. And before I do this, let me just put a fresh ice cube in it. So we ensure cooling. And what I'm doing now is if I place it to the center right here, view it from the side, you will see the magnets seem to float. If I let go of it, they will be just attracted to the sides. But if I hold it in the center, I feel almost no pull or push. So they just want to stay in the center like this. So you can see when I move the housing up and down. What I'm doing next is I just turn on the setup. It's at four hertz currently. 
and you can see out down here magnets are still shaking let me just turn on uh, turn up the frequency a little i have to hold it like this because you can see it already the smoke it has to be cooled properly yeah you can see the magnet shaking like crazy when i turn it on like this this was just another small demonstration of this um, setup what i also did is i made the other half of it so this one is south polarity this one is north polarity and what i also tried is like just um yeah put these two halves together to a sphere and have both of them connected to the audio amplifier and turn them both on let me tell you this i couldn't like really um, measure the field inside or do anything interesting to show you on camera doesn't move or so but i felt something strange when holding it okay i won't go further than that so what i am assuming is i can't put when it's as long as it's closed as a sphere i can't put a gauss meter or field viewer inside of it but what i'm assuming is going on is like as you can see here the zero point this blank spot is right around like one centimeter above the coil not in the center when both half spheres are not closed but when both half spheres are close to one sphere i think most certainly and that's what i've seen from other tests with these sphere, sphere bowl arrays the zero point shifts right to the center and when you already see what happens when the half spheres are open and i apply an ac current you see how the the, the point is shifting or the overall field is shifting in here if this is closed to if this bowl is closed i think something amazing is going on with inside these two bowls like the field itself inside the sphere must be like i don't know expanding collapsing and so on and what i thought about is like these are just trigger coils like of course they use a lot of power to be driven but they trigger the entire field inside here to expand and collapse i don't know how far that goes in terms of what you can do with it but it's definitely interesting to see that you can um yeah influence the entire field of an entire array so much with just one small sized electromagnet coil placed in a strategically yeah, good position within the field. Um, yeah, more tests have to be done with this setup, which I will do, but not in this video. Maybe you guys have some great ideas, especially when it comes to cooling the setup or what other tests that I could do with it. Just let me know in the comments if you have a good idea. Um, Anyways, this is how far I wanted to show you the whole setup in this video right now. Um, I have to come up with a better cooling solution while if I close them both, I can't run them longer for like five seconds. So uh, yeah, not everything will just melt down. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found something interesting yet. So thanks for watching, have a nice day and goodbye.